I have a new keyboard. Actually, that statement is almost a complete lie. It's not new because I've had this for years and it was extremely second-hand when I got it. And it's not really a keyboard, it's more like half a keyboard. So what this is, is a Razer Nostromo gaming keypad intended for playing games, particularly first-person shooters. What you get out of it is a relatively ergonomic setup that's supposed to live on the left-hand side of your main keyboard with your right hand on the mouse, your left hand goes on this thing. You get 14 keys in a relatively ergonomic layout, a clicky mouse wheel for changing weapons, a squeezy modifier key, a D-pad, and this thumb button down here that's fairly hard to reach. I bought this a while back when I was having an RSI scare, uh, shooting pains in my right hand. And given that nearly everything I do that is either fun or lucrative involves keyboards, I was particularly worried that this might stop me being able to type. So I got this with the idea that it would teach me how to type one-handed. I'd be able to leave the right hand on the mouse, like you do for gaming, and just type on the gaming keypad on the left. Luckily, the RSI pain turned out to be completely unrelated muscle stress and went away, but by that time I'd already written the software. So I'm going to talk about this a bit because it's quite interesting. You may notice that this keyboard has rather fewer keys than a normal keyboard. So given there's only 14 main buttons, how are you going to type 26 different letters? The answer is combinations of keys because I was using this thing as a cording keyboard. The cording keyboards are a very old idea for entering text, where you use, rather than a single letter per key, you use combinations. It's a much older idea than you might think. Stenography machines were using this way back in the mid-1800s. Uh, Bodo's original telegraph code was 1874, and it was a 5-bit code intended to be entered manually on a keyboard with five keys. One key generates each bit. The idea has never really gone away. Uh, modern stenography machines are still courting, although they are 10 key. Uh, Doug Engelbart, in his epic 1968 user interface demo, was intending the user's right hand to be on a mouse and the left hand to be on a piano-style courting keyboard. People try and bring the idea back every now and again in modern forms. It never really gets anywhere, I suspect, because the big problem with cording keyboards is they are epically hard to learn, as I will demonstrate later. So I first encountered cording keyboards with the BBC Micro in the 1980s, where I, there were adverts for the Quinky, also known as the MicroWriter, which was a cording keyboard device for the thing. I think they sold about three. Luckily, I never had any pocket money to buy one, so I kind of dodged a bullet there. But it stuck in my mind. So on comes the RSI scare. I thought about cording keyboards. Buying a real one is stupidly expensive because they're, the modern ones are incredibly specialist and produce in small numbers, but these things are cheap particularly if you buy them as second-hand as I did. And it's just a USB keyboard. Well, USB keyboard and mouse. So writing some software to turn this into a cording keyboard was really easy. It's only about seven, 800 lines of C. And that took me about three days. Sadly, learning how to type on the thing was a rather different matter. But let me plug the thing in and set it up, and I will show you how it works. So here it is, all set up, plugged in, and ready to go. Uh, sorry about the reflections in the screen. My little laptop has got this incredibly shiny screen, and as a result, you have an excellent view of my microphone stand. I hope you enjoy it. So I decided to call my software Narcissus because if Razer called this thing the Nostromo, because it's full of aliens and will eventually explode, I decided that what you really want when faced with a Nostromo is a Narcissus, so here we are. 
Uh, it's a simple C program with about 800 lines of code. It took me a few days to write. Uh, it is currently running in the background. Uh, what it does is it looks specifically for this USB keyboard and then translates the keystrokes into X events. So I can type and stuff shows up. And I can type combinations and stuff shows up. Like so. Uh, now, the interesting bit is learning the chords. So I also wrote a tutor program called NARTutor. So let's just start that at level one, shall we? So what this is doing is it's telling me that it wants me to learn a single key combination, which is E. In order to type an E, I press button three, like so. And then I press four and eight for a return. Now, the way I set up the combinations, and I made the coding pattern myself, uh, it needs some work. I didn't know about Bordeaux code when I made this, or I would have probably have used that. The way it works is use the same coding combinations on the top row and on the middle row. On the top row, you get uh, lowercase letters. On the middle row, you get uppercase letters, and it is as simple as that. To type in other keys, you use other combinations involving diagonals. You've noticed I'm using uh, 4 and 8 diagonally here for return. 4 and 10 is backspace. Uh, 5 and 9 is forward space, etc. Uh, the bottom row is used for additional modifiers. So, for example, to get numbers, I hold down 11, and then I can just type in the normal way. Uh, the This modifier key here is Control, so I can delete that line of text by doing Control u which is 2 and 4. Uh, the D-pad's a D-pad. However, if you hold down 11, then it becomes page up, page down, home end, etc. Uh, the thumb button is unused because it's a reach to get at. Punctuation and so on is done by a whole bunch of really weird combinations involving diagonals. So 1 and 9 gives me a open brace. The opposite, which is 6 and 4, will then give you the corresponding close brace. The problem with these is that learning them is a pain because you very rarely use any of these options. And in hindsight, it would probably have been better not to make cording combinations for the punctuation. Instead, using, I think, multi-key patterns involving ASCII codes would be better. It's just learning chords for the uh, the letter keys is bad enough, but learning another 20 or so for the punctuation, which you hardly ever use, ain't fun. Uh, what else is there that's interesting? Oh yeah, verticals give you other punctuation, but verticals are very bad because you can't really type them with your hand in place. You've got to rotate your hand sideways to get at them, so that's not brilliant. But let me demonstrate to you actually like typing on the thing, typing letters. So this is telling me two chords, E and T. So T is a four. Our first actual word is T, so T, E, E. E, which apparently is in the word list. We now get to level five. So we've got uh, three chords. I will skip ahead to level 10. And yes, I am typing the commands on the ordinary keyboard because reasons. So here we have 10 different chords. And uh, yeah, so T, S is these two, A and R, trio, T, R, I, O. Uh, the return's bad. I picked four and six, four and eight, so it's actually this rather awkward movement like that. I should have actually have picked three and nine because that's uh, much easier to get at, and you type a lot of returns. Uh, I think I was expecting you to use four and eight, these two fingers, but I kind of don't. So try there, 
and like so. T R E A D S. T R E A D. T O R S. T O O T. Uh, H no. H I E R. You get the idea. T I E. D. Uh, move down one, so you get T I uh, D I N E S S. It will actually fail that because you know I should have put a bit of thought in and then made it accept both cases. But that demonstrates how capital letters work. T I D I N E S S T I D E S T H R E A T E N So yeah that works fine um I find that I've, I've been practicing with this for a while today for this video and I am getting noticeably better at typing on the thing. Uh, and you notice that this hand is like completely unused. It's just sitting here out of camera range. Uh, so it does genuinely work as a single-handed keyboard. You'll also notice that trying to type on it and talk at the same time is not so successful. It is hard to use. But I can totally imagine that with some dedicated practice and, you know, being driven to it by maybe not being able to use one hand, it would be totally successful. The Keyboard combinations need work. The letters work okay. The rest of it, not so hot. Uh, o, O, R, E, S, T. Uh, that's the wrong word. Stored. Like so. So I am totally going to keep this as backup in case I need it. The other thing that might be worth doing is, of course, this is a left-handed keyboard. There's no way you could use uh, your right hand on it. Uh, my right hand is more dexterous because I am right-handed. And normally you put your right hand on the mouse, but maybe with this thing it would be better to have a the keyboard under my right hand and the mouse on my left hand. I'm not sure. It would need uh, experimentation. So stood, stent. I'm also not entirely sure of how good it is ergonomically, given this hand is not moving, it's doing lots of up and downs. But it is at least a very different pattern of movement than in, I normally get with a keyboard. I'm a self-taught programmer typist, so I do touch type, but I don't use any standard scheme. My hands move around the keyboard all the time. I can't use ergonomic keyboards because I tend to type letters on the wrong side of the keyboard with my hands. This does keep my hands moving, which is good strain-wise. And of course, with this thing, the whole point is you don't get any of it. The software is completely generic. It uses uh, X input APIs to access the, the keyboard here. This presents itself as a USB keyboard and mouse, the mouse being the scroll wheel. Uh, so the Narcissus software will work on any USB or probably other keyboard. 
you do need a certain amount of rollover to make the cords work but it should adapt to pretty much anything and in fact having the left side of a normal keyboard under your hand is reasonably comfortable so uh, it's all open source on github there's a link in the description below if anyone's interested get in touch yeah my typing speed is not the great and this is only level 10 in order to be able to type properly you've got to get all the way up to level 26 and use all the combinations including the four letter ones I did think about well of course I can only go up to five I can only go up to four different uh, combinations because I only have four fingers at this part of my hand so I can't press all five so I ended up with X and J as being the least used keys and of course yeah combinations like uh, these V and Y also not brilliant but I think everything else is a three letter combo or fewer uh, S H A R I uh, A S A R E E R O O T E. So, this is a demonstration of my new, not so new, homemade cording keyboard, except not actually a keyboard at all because it's not a keyboard. Uh, R O A S T E R. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested, if you've used the coding keyboard before, if you want to use this, post a comment. Let me know what you think. And I think I will just sit here and uh, practice on this thing for a bit. R O a T. Very, very exciting. I will say that working through this word list, I have found some words I never knew before. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think.